Different outdoor basketball court conditions and how to play in them most effectively. I'm Tony. Welcome back to Street Ball Strategy. I got that heart in the grid. I've been grinding. I will not relent. I will not relent. I got the heart of a lion and I'm looking right at your neck. Right at your neck. I'm cut from a different cloth. A little bit different than y'all. Today we're talking about different strategies to play the most effective basketball you can in any outdoor basketball condition. For most outdoor basketball players, that means rain, wind, sun in your eyes, that kind of stuff. So that's what we're going over today, how to play the best basketball you can regardless of the condition of the court. Just to touch on rain real quick, I already have a whole video dedicated to how to play in the rain. It's not a great video. It was before I was even starting to find my voice as a YouTuber, but even though it's not a good video, it does have good information in it. So you should definitely check that out if you're looking for good information about how to play effectively in the rain, or at least on wet courts because of the rain. But I will expound on it a little bit by saying the thing about rain is that, and the, and the court being wet, is that it kind of equals the playing field for everybody, meaning it affects everybody the same way. It's going to force everybody to slow down. When the court is wet, thus the ball is gonna be wet, the backboard, the rim, everything is gonna be wet, which is going to mean you're going to have less control over the basketball than you normally would. So players compensate for that by slowing down their play. And another thing they do to gain more control over a wet basketball, and what you should do is to decrease the amount of velocity you're putting on the basketball. The way you do that is you decrease velocity by decreasing distance. So especially if we're talking about shooting, like the further away from the rim you are, the more velocity you have to put into your shot. The more velocity you have to put into a wet ball, the less control you're going to have. So therefore, you should decrease the distance by shooting closer to the basket. The same thing with passing. Longer passes take more velocity, the more velocity you have with a wet basketball, the less control you have. So the rain creates a great opportunity for you to work on your close to the rim game, whether it be driving to the basket and finishing or working in the post. Even if that's not your game, don't be discouraged by the fact that now you're being forced to do that. Look at it as an opportunity to grow and to practice. It's gonna make you a more well-rounded player and the more used to playing in wet conditions you are, that's something else that you have in your bag, a skill and ability that other players probably don't have. The more you polish that skill, the more well-rounded your game's gonna be, the better and more uh, separation you're gonna create between yourself and your opponents. So don't be afraid of wet, rainy courts. Get out here, practice, get a feel for how to play and control the ball when the court is wet that is going to separate you, elevate you, make you a better player than most of the other players out here at the court. In windy conditions, you have the same kind of problem that you have with rain, which is loss of control with the basketball. Except unlike rain, you don't lose surface tension when it's windy. So when it's wet, everything is wet. The ball, the court, backboard, everything. Everything is wet, thus you lose surface tension, thus everything is slippery. When it's windy, you don't have that problem. But yet and still, distance and most notably with wind, height is the problem. Usually when it comes to wind, dribbling and passing, not really a problem because in terms of the height of the ball, it's staying somewhere, at, it's only traveling at least to your torso in terms of the height of the ball when you're dribbling or passing. It's long range shooting that becomes the problem in the wind because in order to shoot the ball from three, right, you have to put a nice arc on the ball which is gonna send the ball 20 some feet into the air. And if it's windy right down here at the level of your body and your torso, it's gonna be even windier, you know, 10, 15 feet above your head. And the ball's gonna get blown all over the place. It's gonna mess up your arc and your direction and your rotation of the ball. It's gonna mess all that stuff up, means you're gonna have less control over long range shooting, which again is gonna present you with the opportunity to get to the basket, work around the basket, get used to having nice short distant shots at the basket. Unlike rain, wind does not necessarily affect everybody the same way because in the case where like the wind is constantly blowing, 
at some points you're gonna get gusts of wind that are harder than others. You can't predict when or how that's gonna happen. So it could happen that, you know, you shoot the ball and there's barely any wind and then your teammate shoots the ball and there's a huge gust of wind and it blows his shot way over, you know, away from the basket. So wind's gonna affect different people in different ways at different times. You can't predict it. You certainly can't control it. But what you can control is the kind of shots that you're taking. The less the ball has to travel in the air, the smaller the distance, the less chance the wind is going to have to affect your shot. So get to the basket, post up, work the post, get in the paint. Anything you can do to reduce the distance of your shots are going to up your percentage of how well you're going to be able to score in windy conditions. And just like rain, make sure you practice in the wind, make sure you get uh, experience playing with the wind because it's a condition where if you're able to compensate for it when it happens if you're used to doing that the more skill you have at doing that the more experience you have that's going to be more of a, a step up and advantage that you have on other players out at the court that just aren't bothered to playing in wet or windy conditions think about it when you see a basketball court on a windy day or a wet day, are there players out on the court? Maybe where you live, maybe the courts are always packed no matter what, but I would say probably the majority of us, when it's windy or the court is wet, it's just the court's empty. Nobody's out here. So if you are out here under those conditions, you're getting skill and experience that nobody else is getting. The more you do that, the more comfortable you become, the, the more you're gonna set yourself apart from those players because you could be out here one day and it could be just beautiful weather conditions and then it gets windy out of nowhere or it rains really quick and instead of everybody running away and leaving the court for good they stay and now you come back onto the court after it's done raining after you know five or ten minutes you come back on and now the court's wet and nobody else out here has the experience of playing in that wind or playing on a wet court but you do and now because of that now you have more experience, more skill. Now you're the kind of the top man on that totem pole for those weather conditions for that day. It's stuff like that that's going to help to really build your reputation over time. Now when it comes to the sun being in your eyes because it's near or around the backboard and when you're facing the backboard it's like beaming right into your eyeballs, there's nothing really I can tell you that's going to help mitigate that I could tell you the obvious answer which is like okay try wearing sunglasses but if the Sun's directly beaming into your face like sunglasses aren't really gonna help you all that much really the only thing you can do with a condition like that is do whatever you can face your body however you can so that as much of the side of your body like one of the sides of your body is facing the Sun instead of you facing it full on at the backboard. So that means you're gonna have to work on your baseline game somewhat. You're gonna have to work on using either baseline to score from. Because when you're on the baseline, that's gonna put the side of your body to the direction that the sun is coming from. And so it's still gonna bother you peripherally from whatever side that the sun happens to be on. It's still gonna be a factor, but at least you're not staring directly into it. So while that's, it's, it's complete inconvenience when the sun is directly in your face, it gives you the opportunity to now work on your baseline game. Whether that be, you know, shooting, driving, or most notably posting up somewhere along the baseline it allows you the opportunity to get down there, work on your game, improve it. Uh, if, you know, if you're like a guard like me and you don't spend very much time at all in the post or on the baseline, because I'm, I'm a point guard, I'm usually at the top somewhere, the sun being in your eyes in that case allows you the opportunity to go down, work on your baseline game. It, force, it kind of forces you to do it, because <laughs> otherwise you're just not gonna be able to see. So get on the baseline, Put in work down there use days like that to really get in good practice good drills working on your baseline game in a sunny day scenario like that posting up can kind of be your best friend because now you're just putting your your back to the sun and the basket and now you're going to work on your post game and while you're doing it the sun is behind you now 
when you turn around and make whatever move you're gonna make, right, the sun's gonna be back in your eyes, but if you shoot something like a jump hook or something like that, you have less chance. Now you're gonna have your, your side to wherever the sun is coming from. It'll affect you a little bit less in that case. So work on your post game. Also realize that when you're working on your post game, you know, especially during actual gameplay, you don't have to shoot out of the post just because you're working down there. You can very easily pass out of the post, try to get better position, get the ball back. You don't have to shoot every time you're in the post, which means you don't have to turn around and look at the sun every time you're in the post either. Whatever conditions you find yourself in, always trying to look at the positives of those conditions instead of focusing on the negatives of why those conditions are making it more difficult for you. Try to find the positives of what about those conditions can you use to improve your game. And lastly, real quick, let me hit on the condition of snow on the court because I'm sure if I don't, I'm gonna hear it down in the comments at some point in the future. So let me just say, living in Michigan, playing basketball for 30 plus years of my life. In that time, I have played relatively a lot of basketball in snowy conditions, uh, at least compared to anyone I've ever seen or heard of playing in the snow. Let me be clear, when I say playing in the snow, I don't mean the court is covered in snow and I just come out here and start playing on a snow covered court. I've done that but there's really no point in doing that because it nullifies the whole experience. The ball is not gonna bounce in snow. It'll bounce <laughs> it'll bounce initially but as soon as snow starts to get caked on your basketball it's gonna stop bouncing and once the ball stops bouncing there's really no reason to even be out here. So instead what I've done numerous times as a teenager especially is if it's a mild winter day and the weather is not frigid to the point where you're gonna immediately get hypothermia and you're not gonna get snow or rain for that day what my friends and I would do is we'd get out on the court either the day before or early the day of and we would just shovel off the court just shovel off the court make sure you know get it cleared as much as possible so that you know in the coming hours or the next day when you do come out to the court it will be dry so that you you get as much moisture off the court as possible give it a day to dry so that the next day when you come out to the court it's nice and dry even though everything else is surrounded by snow that's point number one you can't play in snow effectively. You can't have a snow covered basketball and play basketball effectively. It's just not going to work. So you need a nice dry court even if you're surrounded by snow. From there on, assuming that the court is dry or most of the court is dry and you're not stepping in, you know, moisture and getting slippery because of it, now you're kind of playing regular basketball. The only effect that snow has or, or cold weather has is that it's going to make the ball harder, right? It's going to it's going to really, you know, it's gonna really sort of give it a feeling like it's it's kind of solid right it's still gonna bounce and everything it's gonna you know perform the same it's just gonna feel really hard also the because of that the bounce off the backboard and the rim that's gonna be more stiff as well so be prepared for that other than that you're just gonna be cold at least at the beginning and then you know after 10 minutes you know running around keeping moving breathing hard getting your blood flowing it's just gonna be kind of a regular basketball day except for it's gonna be cold. And then like any long rebounds that you have that go out of bounds and then the ball <laughs> travels and, and rolls into the snow, that's gonna be inconvenient because you're gonna have to, you know, dry it off, spin it, bounce it, try to get as much snow off of it as quickly as possible to get it as dry as possible. Like your hands are gonna freeze, right? It, it's, it, you want the ball to dry, stay as dry as you possibly can because the more wet the ball gets, the colder it's going to feel, the more numb your hands are going to be, and then the less control of the ball you're going to have. That's, you know, that's what happens when it's snowing. But other than that, you know, the, the biggest key to playing in the snow is keep the court, keep the ball as dry as possible. And if you do that, you're going to have a relatively normal session of basketball. That's the different outdoor basketball court conditions and how to play in them most effectively. I want to thank you guys for watching. If you found this video helpful, if you think it's going to help you play better, more uh, efficiently, 
better than anyone else on the court inside of you know said weather conditions please subscribe to the channel also hit that thanks button when you hit that button it supports the channel directly and it gives you a sort of like a I don't know like it makes your your comments down below it highlights them and makes them look cool and fancy and all that stuff I don't know I'm not you know I'm not I'm not the tech guy I'm the basketball guy so I don't know the technicalities of it but I know it makes your comments look cool and it supports the channel so when you do that thank you very much as always like share subscribe hit that notification bell so you're notified whenever any of my videos go live and until then I will see you guys next week what you know about wealth what you know about killing the 10 kings still in the ring no bell I keep it 100, I come from the mud and from Brooklyn to London, Jamaica, you know me, I done it. Ain't on the feet, ain't on the feet, ain't on the feet of my blood.